these are shelf funguses. This one is tinder conch or hoof fungus, probably from the fact that it's extremely hard and woody, unlike other funguses. You have to snap it off the tree. And these are our artist conch. So that derives its name from the fact that the color will change to brown when the white underside is scratched. So an artist can use them as a canvas, and they have used them as canvases in the past. This fungus also has antimicrobial and anti-tumor properties. Here is a sphinx moth, or a hawk moth. You might know this moth better for its caterpillar form, which is called a hornworm, the thorn in the side of anyone trying to grow tomatoes or other nightshade plants. Sphinx moths are noted for their varied colors and patterns. They are some of the fastest insects in flight, and they can hover in the air, often near flowers, feeding on nectar with their proboscises. Here we have some painted turtle shells. Painted turtles will start their day by basking in the sun together, and then once they're warm enough, they go into the water to forage for food. Then once they get chilled again, they come out for another cycle of basking and then feeding. In the winter, they'll bury themselves and still get oxygen through their skin. Another fun fact is when they hatch from their shells, they use a special part of their jaw called an egg tooth to break it open. Here we have a wood turtle shell. During the spring, wood turtles are active during the day and almost always found close by streams. In the winter, like painted turtles, they'll also bury themselves in the mud at the bottom of the river and barely move. Their mating activities involve males fighting to gain access to females and several hours of dancing with them, nudging their shell, head, tail, and legs. To hunt, sometimes they will stomp the ground with their feet, which people think may imitate the sound of falling rain and cause earthworms to rise and become easy prey. This is our fox squirrel. Fox squirrels have amazing vision, hearing, and smelling capabilities. They use scent marking to communicate amongst themselves and establish their home range. In captivity, they can live up to 18 years. This guy is thriving. Uh, they will do their part for the forest by often forgetting where they may have buried an acorn for food and planting a tree on accident. Thank you, squirrels. This is a turkey feather. Turkeys used to be endangered. They were hunted almost to extinction in the early 1900s, but restoration programs brought the numbers back up to about 6.5 million today. A turkey sex can be determined from its droppings. Females will produce spiral-shaped droppings, and male droppings are shaped like the letter J. Benjamin Franklin praised the turkey for being a much more respectable bird than the bald eagle. So, the ruffed grouse. If you hear a drumming sound while walking in the woods, it's probably a ruffed grouse. The displaying males will make that sound by beating their wings back and forth, while standing on a log or other raised surface. They will also often bathe in or lie in anthills, fluffing their feathers to clean them. They are also referred to as forest chickens due to their appearance. Here we have some ring-necked pheasant tail feathers. These birds are really gaudy. They have red faces and an iridescent green neck with a bold white ring, hence the name. They spend most of their time on the ground and only resort to flying when startled. And when they do fly, they can reach nearly 40 miles per hour. They sometimes cope with extreme cold by remaining dormant for days at a time. Here we have a raccoon skull. Fun fact, raccoons are very intelligent. There was a series of studies in the mid to late 20th century that demonstrate that raccoons can remember solutions to tasks for up to three years. It's better than me. Here we have our state animal, the white-tailed deer. 
White-tailed deer have no den or nest. They'll sleep in a different spot every single night. If you are walking along and you see a sapling with distinctive scraped or stripped pieces of bark, that would be a tree rub made by a male white-tailed deer polishing his antlers during a rut. Their winter coats have individual hairs that are thick and hollow, which provide them insulation. And in the summer, their antlers are covered with a furry skin called velvet that contain blood vessels that supply nutrients to the growing antlers. Here we have a bald eagle replica skull. Bald eagles are making a comeback at the moment after being driven to near extinction due to DDT poisoning and illegal killing. They tend to return to the same nest every year, just adding more sticks and enlarging it to massive proportions, at times up to a thousand pounds. They will mate in flight, one eagle flipping upside down and locking talons with another. Here we have the great blue heron. Great blue herons are one of the most common herons. They will bark like a dog when they get startled. Along with fish, they also peck at mice, squirrels, and anything else small that comes across their path. They will nest in colonies of up to 100 birds. So first we have a red fox skull as well as a pelt. Red foxes are independent creatures. They're usually alone when they're seen. They are very intelligent and are shown to learn from past experiences. They will sleep at the base of a tree or rock, even in the winter, curling up in a ball. They have excellent hearing and can hear low frequency sounds, enabling them to detect small mammals digging and gnawing underground. They will hunt for food even when full, catching extra food underground or burying it in the snow. They find it later using smell and memory. And here is a gray fox. So gray foxes are less common than the red fox. They are also known as tree foxes because they often will climb up trees to escape predators or to rest. They have been seen up to 20 feet high. The gray fox is thought to mate for life and a pair of gray foxes will defend a territory of two to three square miles. Here we have the beaver. Beavers are the second largest rodent in the world and the largest in Michigan. They can alter their environment by building dams out of mud and woods that they harvest in order to create larger, more stagnant bodies of water, which are more ideal habitat. As you can see here, we have found some beaver chewed logs I'm showing. They tend to be second to only to humans when it comes to environmental alteration. Many other species rely on the ponds that beavers create with their dams. Here is a beaver pelt that is hung in a way that they used to arrange pelts in the old fur trapping days. Fun fact, beavers can remain submerged for up to 15 minutes in water. They have a specialized claw on each hind foot that is split like a comb and used for grooming. Beavers will mate for life and will only choose another mate if one partner dies. If they need to repair their dam, they do it by hearing, not by sight. So if they hear moving water, they know their dam is damaged and they will go fix it. Here we have a coyote. Coyotes are very adaptable and can be found in most habitats, even in big cities. They can reach up to 40 miles an hour running short distances. Here's my hand next to our print model. Coyotes will often court females for two to three months before mating and they are monogamous, so mated pairs will stay together for many years or for life. In size, they are generally larger than foxes, but smaller than wolves. Bobcats are primarily nocturnal and elusive, so are a rare sight in the wild. They make similar sounds to a house cat. And they often walk with their tail curled upward, exposing the white underside, making them easy to identify. They use the same trails to look for rabbits and other prey, and then they stalk or lie in wait and ambush their prey by rushing forward and killing it quickly with a bite to the neck. They have been known to go without eating for several weeks at a time during famine periods. We have a whole mount in the office, if you can see. Black bears are the only bear species in Michigan. 
They tend to live in heavily wooded areas, but can also be found in areas where certain food types are plentiful, such as berry patches or human food waste, like campgrounds and dumpsters. So empty your trash. They are powerful swimmers and good at climbing trees. They will feed heavily in the summer to add layers of fat for their hibernation in the winter. They can live an average of 18 years in the wild, but the record is 39 years in total. Black bears are not always black. They can be brown, blonde, gray, blue, or even white. We have our own very own bear in the office here, as well as three bears out in the Sturgeon River Preserve, if you want to go check that out on our Facebook or YouTube. This can be found in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, with the majority of the population living on Isle Royale National Park. They are forest dwelling. They hang out by small bodies of water with aquatic vegetation to eat the vegetation and also get in the water to stay cool because they cannot sweat. The males have this flap of skin under their neck called a dewlap, which has no function that we can discern. They have a four-chambered stomach for processing the woody vegetation they eat. They can run up to 35 miles per hour and swim up to 6 miles per hour for long periods. If you happen to see a moose on the news because it wandered into an urban area, this behavior is often due to a fatal disorder caused by a worm in the brain. It will cause a moose to wander in a straight line for hundreds of miles. Here we have the American elk. Elk are smaller than moose, but more than twice the size of white-tailed deer. They will make a bugling noise or high-pitched whistle when males are challenging each other to a rut and that noise can be heard from several miles away. All the current Michigan elk come from releases in 1918. They will thrash at small trees to polish their antlers and they will tear up vegetation and wear it on their antlers to express dominance. Here we have some elk antlers we found in our Sturgeon River Preserve. They've been chewed up a little bit. We think it might have been a porcupine that was chewing it up for some calcium. And here we have a elk pelt and another pair of antlers. <laughs> 